commission tonight. We don't really I wouldn't manufacture anything. I work for a construction company. And uh, construction companies are, are, in general, heavy construction companies, which is the type of work we do, are the antithesis of these bright, new, clean businesses. We're the, we're the old, tired, uh, incredibly wasteful business. Uh, I've heard statistics between 40 and 80% of heavy construction is waste. And I don't know if it's 80, but it's, it's every bit of 40. We used to have containers come through our sites by the dozens literally two or three every day. And uh, my story is, uh, first of all, I work for a company that is a typical heavy construction company, but it's very, it's very atypical. We happen to own and operate wind farms. We have our own uh, licensed uh, construction and demolition debris recycling center. So we're a very progressive company as a whole. And, uh, and I draw a lot of my inspiration from the guy I work for, Jim Cashman. And this little story starts about 15 years ago, right out behind this building, uh, when before the central artery, there were some ramps that were installed over by the, uh, the concrete company behind this building. And those ramps were to carry traffic over to the Tobin Bridge from I-93. Uh, my job was to go in and tear those ramps down and build $300 million of, uh, of new uh, elevated structure, those new ramps, and, uh, and a whole section of I-93 next to the College. And what we were tearing down were ramps that were built um, back in the 90s. We had to build temporary structures. We had to build brand new bridges and spend five, ten, twenty million dollars on building a new bridge. This is one of such bridge that's going up. And those bridges would be in, uh, in service for maybe a couple of months, literally six months, and then we tear them down. And when you tear down a bridge that is built like we built fire bridges in this job, you literally destroy all the components of that bridge, and they all end up in landfills. But the, the, the structures that were there built in the 90s to, to take traffic prior to the big dig were built with prefabricated panels. It's, it's a way to build a bridge very quickly. You can put it up quickly, and you can take it down quickly. And all those panels are essentially intact. When you pull it, it's like a little erector set. You pull those, those highway slabs down, and then they're, they're still intact, and they still have value. So the, the army told me in my job, I want you to take X number of these slabs and go put them in a yard and store them. We're going to use them later. But during the project, they ran out of space. And they came to me and said, we'd like you to destroy the rest of them. And here's a couple hundred thousand dollars. Go ahead and put it in the landfill. Well, I'm sitting there. I'm thinking, I'm a, I'm a taxpayer. And I'm an engineer. And these slabs are perfectly good slabs. Why would I want to crush them and put them in the landfill? And I had another tunnel going on right over here in North Station. I said, why don't you give them to me? I'll use them over here as traffic taking for this project, and you can save each one thousand dollars. Well, the state was thrilled. They said, here, take them. And we took them and used them. But after we used them, here's a, here's a picture of the old ramps when they were up. All those, the, the white decking, the concrete decking are, are these slabs laid across the bridge. That's, that's my house. That's the baby picture from my house here. When we, we took them down, this is what happens when you break up the slabs. It's, you get a, a, a bunch of nothing. It's, it's expensive to get rid of. The steel that's, that's in, in these structures is there's so little of it with respect to the rest of the materials that there's no real money in it. There's only a few hundred dollars worth of, of steel in each one of the slabs. So I have, they asked me, what are you going to do with these slabs? And I said, well, we'll use them for this job over here. I said, what are going to do with them after that? I said, I think I'll build a house. And they all started laughing. But I was serious. And this is in Lexington, we found a lot that was part of a, a historic neighborhood uh, developed by Walter Brokers in the 40s. And it starts with the foundation, uh, you know, with all due respect, I appreciate the M1 Abrams uh, heavy uh, vehicle, 71 tons, that's nothing. We, our house, this house was 500 tons. And we start by pouring these professional uh, foundations. Everything on our job site looked like a heavy construction site. There were big concrete pumps. We, um, we poured these giant pillars, and this is the half of the foundation actually that was finished. And then we took a steel that was used during the big dig to hold the walls of the tunnel apart, literally hold them so that they wouldn't move in and you wouldn't get settled outside the tunnel. We took those steel beams and we cut them up and we made the beams for the, for the house to hold up the slabs, which were the floors. And I got in the act, and, and then I turned my perfectly uh, wonderful uh, water resources wife, she's a civil engineer, 
but she was a, a iron worker on weekends. And we fabricated all the steel, and we brought in a 200 ton frame, put up our, our uh, frame, and then these slabs, which weighed 25 tons each, were brought in um, pretty much without much um, changes. And again, we brought in the big, the big toys and erected the floors. The steel all went up the one day, and the floors went up the next day. So you went from that foundation to that picture in a grand total of two days. We, are, we can see there's, a, there's a, a, a hydrant over in the garage area. We had a lot of uh, energy saving devices or features of this house. We had uh, all the roof drains emptied into a hydrant that was under our garage floor and we could pump that back up for irrigation. But what, the, these slabs are so strong that you can do anything you want in your house. You can, you can literally have 500 people in the kitchen for a party. What we, we did is we cantilevered them up 10, 12 feet off the house for, for porches. And, uh, all the uh, walls were steel studs. Now, if we, what we, in this case, we, we built a roof for my living room on the ground. <coughs> we lifted it up with a 50 ton crane and put it, put it on top of the, of the living room, which was 32 feet high. So it started to come together. Um, that was um, probably halfway through the operation, and that's what it looked like when it was finished. But it was a little different when you walk into a house and you see these giant steel beams crisscrossing through the space. But it was a surprisingly um, comfortable house. And this is something that we wanted to try to convey to other people, that you could take these materials that had, it wasn't just the value of the steel, it was the value of the finished product. It took a lot of effort and cost to build one of these slabs and to destroy them for a few hundred dollars worth of steel was really criminal. Um, the, the other great attribute was you could, this is a, a, a machine dumping um, a, a fully loaded bucket of dirt and rocks on top of a, a garage. Uh, you could put three feet of soil there. We had big boulders the size of this table. And uh, my wife uh, took a crane and brought in a whole bunch of uh, Japanese maples and, and developed an Asian garden up there. So you could have these type of spaces on the top of your house. And it really gave you the flexibility to bring really anything you wanted. And the, the dramatic space is because you had no interior walls. The, the first floor of our house was wide open. This is a six level staircase that winds out all the way through the house. That, that part of it, and the upper part of the, of the photograph was hanging from cables from the ceiling. We call it the Zika, because we had to like, replicate the bridge behind us. And again, uh, do crazy things, you know, put pool tables in the kitchen because you, have, you can do it, you can 40 by 40 feet. And that's what it looked like uh, when it was finished. So we're happy in our house. We were, we're, all of a sudden, people started calling, and they wanted to know the story, and they wanted to get a little bit of insight on it. And um, then we got a call from uh, PBS, and they brought in a film crew, and they did a, a show on it that was narrated by Brad Pitt. And then we were in, we were named one of the top architectural projects in the world by you know, the architectural critic from, um, from the Globe, and we won the Residential Design Award from the AIA, and we were featured in all kinds of magazines. And little by little, the, the, the movement was catching on. This is a pretty cool idea to take these materials and 